Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, now, if you watched the first episode, if you didn't, I'll link to it wherever on YouTube this little thing goes. I was talking about sort of how I was trying to disconnect a little bit more, setting my smartphone font aside, not getting rid of it, but using a feature phone such as this GoFlip from Alcatel or the Xiaomi Kin One uh, S Plus phone that I have here, or just using my smartphone without all the bajillion apps that I have installed on it. See how that goes. Now, it's not because I think smartphones are bad. I love smartphones. I'm an app developer. I love my Android phone. I love the operating system. But I want to see if the uh, actual smartphones can hold up to what I actually need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So maybe to be my secondary phone that I take with me from time to time, pop in and out a SIM card, uh, or maybe it's just good enough and I carry around this phone as a camera or some other thing like that. Not, not really sure. I want to kind of give an experiment there back and forth. So I've been using the Alcatel GoFlip phone. That's what I've been using uh, for a whole week now. Um, and let me pop over to my desktop so you can kind of see what it's about. This phone is the official phone from T-Mobile for basic uh, phones. And in fact, you can see it under devices. I think it's cell phones and basic phones. It's also available from a bunch of other carriers under a bunch of different names, but it is the MyFlip, GoFlip. They're all very, very similar. So uh, it is highly reviewed, as you can see, uh, in general. Uh, and it's about $75 retail. I pick this up off of eBay for about $30 shipped, 20 or $30 shipped, I forget. Uh, but it is relatively nice. It does have a camera, which you're not going to want to use because it's pure garbage. But again, that's not why you're buying this phone. It has a QWVGA display, a bunch of hours of talk time, and it says 11 days standby. That's if you're in airplane mode. I've been getting about three days of battery life on this. It does have an older Bluetooth mode, but it is running um, a dual core processor as LTE based uh, in here, uh, half a gig of, of RAM, which is nice. You can throw an SD card in here, which I did, 32 gigs, which was nice. You can sync it with a bunch of different email providers if you would uh, like to. Uh, I didn't just because it's not the most super secure mechanism. You just do username, password, and it just kind of figures it out. But it does a bunch of other stuff, right? It has hotspot capabilities. It has... Um, has hearing aid compatibility. It has a radio built into it. It has uh, audio, video playback, and a browser built right into it. And that's because it is using KaiOS. Uh, KaiOS is a spinoff of the Mozilla operating system. Uh, and it's in a bunch of different feature phones. In fact, Nokia just announced their 2720 Flip, which I wish was coming here in the US, uh, and the 800 Tough, which are powered by KaiOS. KaiOS is the second uh, largest um, feature phone operating system, or just, I think, operating system for phones in India, for instance. Uh, a bunch of other phones are there. So KaiOS is really cool. It's a web-based platform, uh, and I think it's relatively nice for a feature phone. I, I do like it quite a bit, but it does run into some issues. So the issues that I found first and foremost in the operating system is kind of slow. It's a little bit chuggy, surprisingly. I mean, it's, it's a feature phone. I wasn't really expecting that at all. Um, using this uh, kind of you know T T9 keyboard on a day-to-day -day basis uh, was just fine. I got used to T9 uh, again. It was really really nice. Um, data entry was nice. I uh, figured out my words. It was easy to edit. the The keyboard was responsive. The buttons seemed to work very well. Um, audio playback. I synchronized uh, all my audio using a desktop application called Good Sync, uh, which is pretty cool. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Uh, over here, I have like these jobs uh, over here where I can say from my iTunes podcast synchronized with my MTP device. And I set that up for the camera, photos, podcasts, and it just synchronizes back and forth, which is pretty cool. Audio playback, just fine. It has a headphone jack right there, so you can put that in. Uh, it also has uh, um, just a normal micro uh, USB, so you can charge that into your, your computer, which is nice. Synchronizes pretty fast. Audio playback's fine. It keeps your position. There's no scrolling back and forth, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, it seems like an easy feature to implement, but I could be wrong. Uh, but it does keep your timestamp. So if you're listening to a podcast or, or song, uh, it will keep that you're at minute 20, for instance. Besides that, uh, using the browser, Google Maps totally works. It has GPS built in, so it can find your geolocation. Uh, it's not turn by turn necessarily. It's sort of old school next back and shows you updates on a map. But if you need to get somewhere, it totally works. If you need to look up store hours, it totally works. Uh, if you need to click on a link in a text message, it brings you right into the browser, opens it up. 
totally works, uh, which is nice. It has a front uh, screen, which is super nice on it to show you the time, any messages, alerts, things that are coming up. Uh, now, with that being said, I did take a few phone calls. Great. I like the weight of it. It's super duper light in your pocket. It feels like you don't even have a phone, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but I will say the biggest issue that I found and seems to be a common trend thus far is this phone does not support group text message. Now, when you go into the text messaging app, it shows that you can add multiple recipients, but it just sends an email to multiple recipients or a text message, I should say, to multiple recipients and they receive them separately. You receive a group text message. It comes in as an MMS, but uh, you're not going to see who else it's by. And if you respond, you're just putting it back to the person that sent it to you. So kind of interesting there, just in general, it's not the ideal scenario, I would say. And for that reason alone, I'm kind of giving up on this phone. Uh, I haven't sent too many group SMS messages, but even just missing one uh, could be really important uh, as on a family thread. And I feel like in 2019, I can't live without that. That being said though, uh, if you don't use group SMS messages, it might be good. There is an updated version of KaiOS, iOS 2. I, I'm going to just say it's 2. I feel like it. This is the one on those Nokia phones. Also on the Go Flip V, which is the updated version but is exclusive to Verizon. That has sort of a mini app store, which are web-based things. I don't know if that has group SMS. I would need to test it and see. Uh, but it does have some apps, per se, such as Google Maps and WhatsApp and things like that. Which is actually kind of nice if you think of those as utilities uh, more than apps in general. But that being said, I was actually pleasantly surprised by my experience. I got some good uh, conversation starters using this phone. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I did find that I could use it just like normal. But the group, group, group MMS or SMS, I would say, text messaging was a real downer. Um, besides that, of course, I could get all my authentication. I was using Google Authenticator. I did have to have this around, or for work, for instance, I had to have this around for my authentication app. So that was one thing to, to think about is based on your authentication of what you're using online, you might need that two-factor authentication uh, that's beyond SMS. So inside of applications, you're gonna need something around. Well, that's gonna be it. That's my one-week experiment thus far in the Alcatel Go Flip. My next one is in the Kin 1S Plus, which is very similar to the 1S that they had. Uh, and I'm going to get ready to start doing this and testing it here on T-Mobile and see how it goes. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Of course, listen to Merge Conflict, uh, Merge Conflict episode 166. If you want to learn more, mergeconflict.fm slash 166 will bring you there. Go to the show notes below. Uh, and that's it. Cheers.